straight ahead on CCX News. A new way to rhythm in Plymouth, plus soaring profits at local municipal liquor stores. But first, a Golden Valley family reacts to unspeakable horror at a synagogue. I don't understand any of this. CCX News starts right now. Heartbreak and healing. The local Jewish community is reacting to Saturday's mass shooting at a synagogue in Pittsburgh. 11 people were killed and six others were hurt. The attack comes at a time where anti-Jewish hate crimes are on the rise. According to the FBI, Jewish people were the victims of more reported hate crimes than any other religious minority in 2016. In that year, 684 anti-Jewish incidents were reported. Golden Valley Mayor Shep Harris is Jewish. He denounced the hateful act and says he will not be afraid. It's natural to be fearful. It's natural to be scared. It's natural to be worried. But if we give in to that fear, then they win. And I just, I refuse to let them win. We can't let them win. If they, you know, they want to sit down and have honest conversations and talk about understanding each other's perspectives, and that's going to lead to better education of everybody, then yeah, let's go forward with that. But this isn't going to work, and we can't afford to let it work. Reporter Sonia Gowen spoke with the Golden Valley family directly impacted by the recent tragedy. It's just unbelievable. The attack at the Tree of Life Synagogue is hitting too close to home for Melissa Cohen Silberman. Just to see the word synagogue massacre on a screen. Her eyes have been glued to the TV, watching the news, trying to get any information she can on the massacre. I don't understand any of this. She hasn't been sleeping well since the attack, especially after learning a distant relative was killed in the shooting. Cherished friend and engaging elegant and warm person. Melissa is proud of her Jewish heritage. Very upfront. I'm very active in my synagogue. I sing in my choir. I tutor bar and bat mitzvah students. But there was a time when she and her family hid their faith. I remember very vividly not really being open about my religion. She says that was a different time period and now Melissa is afraid the hurts of the past may be repeating themselves. And when you go back to 1945 and you think six million, six million, and here we're talking about 11 people being shot in a synagogue. Melissa attends Adath Yeshua Synagogue. Leaders here tell me that they're increasing security. Meanwhile, the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office is also stepping up patrols at Jewish places of worship and organizations. It's very sad that my synagogue is now on the high holy days surrounded by marked Minnetonka police squad cars. She says it's hopeful to see support from around the world, people conquering hate with something much more powerful, love. Just be nice every day, every moment, every second. And in Yiddish or Hebrew, it means be a mensch. Sonia Goins, CCX News. Thank you, Sonia. 2017 was a banner year for municipal liquor stores. According to the Minnesota State Auditor's Office, municipal liquor store sales totaled $349 million in 2017. That's a 1.5% increase from 2016. Delane Cleveland joins us now with more on how Robin Sales Municipal Liquor Store fared. Delane? Shannon, all of the profits generated from Robbinsdale's Municipal Liquor Store are poured back into the city's parks. And in 2017, business at Robbinsdale Wine and Spirits was up 17% over the previous year. A lot of people do want to support the city and are excited to shop at a city-owned store where the profits do go back into their community, which I think everybody's excited about. Robbinsdale Wine and Spirits had more than $3.5 million in sales in 2017, with a net profit of about $150,000. Management says Sunday sales had a small role in that, but an expanded selection of wine and craft beers is another contributing factor. Meanwhile, expectations are even higher for next year. Robbinsdale Wine and Spirits moved next to the new Hy-Vee grocery store, giving the store more exposure and an expanded customer base since opening on on September 18th. And we are noticing great things happening. Um, our wine sales are up, uh, our beer sales are up, uh, our liquor sales are up, our craft beer is going amazingly. Um, we're really enjoying being in the new space. 
Well, one downside to the increased business is that Robbinsdale Wine and Spirits needs to bolster its staff. They'd like to hire four part-time employees, but they're having trouble finding applicants. Meanwhile, it's worth noting that Brooklyn Center also has a municipal liquor store, and it did nearly $6.5 million in sales in 2017, which put it ninth in the entire state among municipal liquor stores. Shannon? All right, thank you, Delane. And now on to Local Vote 2018 and a little over one week to go before Election Day. Here's a reminder to check in to make sure your polling place hasn't changed. For example, in Crystal, the polling location for precincts 2 and 3 in Ward 1 have been moved from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on Douglas Drive to, Mc to Neal Elementary. Polling places are not permanent and locations can change from one year to the next. You can find out where to vote on the Minnesota Secretary of State's website under the Polling Place Finder. The Canadian Pacific Holiday Train is making plans to come right through our area during the second week in December. Plans this year include a stop in Golden Valley, but not in New Hope like in previous years. The train was originally scheduled to make a stop in New Hope, but the stop would have been the same time as a high school hockey game, hockey practice, and dance classes at the New Hope Ice Arena. Plus, it was around the same time elementary school kids were getting out of school. So the city said this year the stop wouldn't work, but they would like to remain in consideration for future visits. Still ahead, up next we visit a new music school in Plymouth, plus highlights from a soggy night in the high school football playoffs. But first, cooler, but Halloween expected to be rain free. Learning music just got a lot more fun. There's a place that even allows you to perform on stage. There is a new music school in Plymouth that opened last month. As Corey Bork shows us, it's filling a niche and opening a new world of music for others. At Bakhtarak Music School in Plymouth, eight-year-old Madeline Haran is learning the cadence of chords. Can you say that with me? Chord progression. Chord progression. So what does that mean? It's lessons like these yeah. that could help her one day be like her favorite band. Imagine Dragons. While Madeline is just starting out. It really was a dream come true. The dream for Jake Shulak is starting to sink in. Shulak started the first Bakhtarak Music School in Minnesota thanks to a little urging from mom. And my mom said, have you ever looked into a music franchise of anything? And I started thinking, I really didn't imagine that uh, a music lesson place uh, was a franchise existed. He credits his guitar playing dad for getting into music and some musicians you may have heard of. Like Eric Clapton and Carlos Santana. Those were people that I, I did and I still try and emulate. Now students try to emulate him with no shortage of instruments you can learn. And the way we've been saying it is that we'll teach anything that we have a student and a teacher for. There are all kinds of music instruments you can learn here at Bach to Rock, and here in the Beat Refinery, they'll even teach you how to be a DJ. Bach to Rock currently has about a dozen instructors. Eric Bell has been teaching for more than a dozen years. It's really rewarding showing up to what, you know, what I would typically call work, but it doesn't feel like work. You know, it feels like I'm getting to, to teach guitar and teach something that I love to someone else that loves it. Instructors say learning an instrument takes patience. It's also good to know Shulak and his team are ready to help. We're really hoping that people will keep coming in and checking out our place and give us a chance to, to teach your, your kids something. <laughs> For Business Matters, Corey Bork, CCX News. Bach to Rock has students of all ages and abilities from as young as two to a violin student in his 50s. And also of note, before starting Bach to Rock, Shulak ran a recording business and he got to do the sound during a live show for Grammy Award winning singer Nora Jones and her backup band. Very cool. Still ahead, how local residents are making Halloween more inclusive to everyone. But first, highlights from a back in class 4A football. John Jacobson has that and more next in sports. Several local teams are still alive in the prep football playoffs. Three local clients, 6A teams, won by big margins. 
including Maple Grove. Cooper Wegscheid on the jet sweep carries here. He gets in for the short touchdown run and it's 7-0 Maple Grove in the first quarter against White Bear Lake. And later in the first quarter, Evan Hall in for a three-yard touchdown. His 17th TD of the season. Maple Grove leads 14-0 after one. Second quarter, Hull gets the call again. This rush covers 17 yards on his way to a 302-yard rushing night to put Maple Grove ahead 21-0. They go on to win it 28-0. They'll play at top-ranked Lakeville North on Friday. Wyzetta entered the playoffs with a 4-4 four four mark. The Trojans got a home game. They took on Centennial in the rain. First offensive series of the game for Wyzetta. Alex Underhill takes the handoff, and the senior goes 37 yards all the way down to the four-yard line, setting up the Trojans' first touchdown and making it 7-0. Later in the first quarter, Trojans in the red zone again. The give to Malachi Jackson. He scores on a nine-yard touchdown to put the Trojans up 14-0. The Cougars had a lot of trouble with turnovers in this game. They fumble here inside their 10-yard line, recovered by Trevor Palish of Wyzetta, and it sets up another Trojans touchdown. Bennett Fragamani scores on the second of his four TD runs to give Wyzetta a 21-0 lead after one. They go on to shut out Centennial 45-0 and play at Woodbury on Friday. Also in Class 6A, Champlain Park hosted Shakopee. First quarter, Bennett Otto connects with Cato Seeley on fourth down. Down to the Sabres two-yard line. Next play, Terrence Kamara powers in for the touchdown, the first of his two scores. The Rebels take a 7-0 lead. Second quarter, Shakopee's Daniel Coolis tries to scramble away from Champlin Park, but Lewis Powell strips the ball. Todd Pop recovers for the Rebels, and it sets up Otto to Seeley, a 29-yard touchdown for the Rebels. They lead it 14-0. And then later, 21-0 at halftime. They go on to win 27-0. They'll play Lakeville South at home on Friday. Cooper was upset by St. Louis Park in the Section 5-5A final a year ago. The Hawks met the Orioles in the Section semifinals this season. And Cooper well-rested after a first-round bye. They take control early. Trayshawn McMillan throws deep to Adrian Adams for the completion down to the St. Louis Park 8-yard line. And it sets up this play. McMillan on the keeper. You get dragged down by the face mask, but he's over the goal line for the touchdown anyway. Cooper leads it 14 to nothing after a quarter. Second quarter, McMillan puts a lot of trust in the receiver. Adams here, double covered on this play, but he hauls in the touchdown pass. as a 33-yard strike. Cooper leads 21 nothing. They win 28 nothing. Or they lead 28 nothing later and win 35-7. They'll host Spring Lake Park. On Friday, in Class 4A, Benilde St. Margaret's and Providence Academy played a wild game in the Section 4 semifinals. And this is a great game. Benilde gets on the board first. Isaiah Smith takes a handoff and gets over the goal line. The Red Knights go up 7-0 in the first quarter. Providence answers as Jeff Echior spins in for the score to tie it 7-7. After one, it's 14 all at halftime. Ahead of the fourth quarter, a big turnover. Smith is stripped by Dominic Lacombe. The Lions recover and it sets up a touchdown for a 21-14 Providence lead. Benilde's defense comes up big here. Echior forced a fumble, lost it by Luke Mathwig, and then Daniel Carter scoops and scores 51 yards for a touchdown. Red Knights tie it at 21. The game goes to overtime, tied at 28. In OT, Benilde's Nick Peterson Zips it to Dylan Rash. He gets in for the touchdown. And they kick an extra point and lead 35-28. Providence quickly answers. Echior gets into the end zone on the first play of overtime for Providence. Makes it 35-34. They go for two and the win, but the snap never gets up to quarterback Anderson. Providence loses for the first time this season. BSM advances to the section final with a 35-34 win. That's all for sports. Shannon, back to you. Thank you, John. In Local Vote 2018, today we talk about who is running for House District 36B, which covers portions of Brooklyn Park and Coon Rapids. We reached out to both candidates, DFL incumbent Melissa Hortman and Republican Jermaine Bozio, to record a candidate statement. Here's a statement from Melissa Hortman. 
Hi, my name is Melissa Hortman. I'm running for state representative in District 36B, which is portions of Brooklyn Park and Coon Rapids. The reason I'm running for the Minnesota House of Representatives is I believe every child deserves a world-class education, every family deserves affordable and accessible health care, and everyone deserves economic security. That means good paying jobs with benefits that they can count on for middle class lifestyle and retirement. I hope you'll get out and vote on November 6th and I hope you'll support Melissa Hortman for state representative in District 36B. Thank you. And we will be right back. If you are the parent of a child with a food allergy, trick or treating can be stressful. However, several residents in the Northwest Metro are doing their part to cater to kids with allergies. Houses with teal pumpkins represent homes that will have allergy friendly trick or treating options. One Robinsdale resident says she started providing alternative treats as a way to be a better neighbor to everyone in the community. Halloween's my favorite holiday and I feel like it's, you know, if kids can participate in their own way, the more the better and um, we have some friends who know specifically that we do the teal pumpkin thing so they make sure to come to our house even if they're not on our block um, you know i think more and more you hear about the allergies and them getting more severe and so you know it's it's just kind of our way to include everybody if possible to find a map of homes that will be participating in the teal pumpkin project head to our website ccxmedia.org and finally, a yearly event in Brooklyn Park where anyone can have a good time. Here's Eric Nelson. Our goal is to help all individuals reach their full potential. It was pure fun for everyone at the annual Ghostly Gala, put on by Reach for Resources, a Twin Cities nonprofit. This is my first time. I'm enjoying myself being here. More than 200 people, including many with disabilities, flocked to this year's event at the Brooklyn Park Community Activity Center. Most of them were smiling all night. Everybody looks forward to it so much. People start asking about it months in advance. Um, we heard people saying last year that it gets better every year. It's a lot of fun. I always like find joy when people like come. They're always smiling and it's really happy. So that like makes me happy too. One of the highlights was a Halloween costume contest, which gave people a chance to show off their creative side. I love Halloween. <laughs> there were also many other activities throughout the evening. Good job. They'll play different games. B6. They'll stop by the bingo table. They'll probably spend most of the rest of the time in the dance floor area where people, people get down. You want to hit it right here? Reach's goal is to improve the quality of life for people with disabilities and give them a chance to experience things that most of us take for granted. We're just helping people to expand their social networks and be engaged in their communities as much as possible. B1. Almost 50 volunteers showed up to the gala and their efforts made everything possible. Thank you. But Thank you. they also got something back too. It's fun to talk to them and they're really, really nice and always no. cheery. In Brooklyn Park, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. Allianz gave $1,600 to help fund the event. And that's all the time we have for now. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here Tuesday starting at 4 o'clock.